okay. <laughs> How many times? Is that 68 guys now? I... Uh, many years ago, there was a friend of mine, Mark Taylor, who was in your band, he and was. I went up to see you uh, when you were live on the tube. We flew up to Newcastle and we to see Mark Taylor and you boys on the tube. God, that's probably 85, 86, a long time ago. So to get back to the, uh, the um, Hard Day's Night, my friend. So tell people what you just told us off air there. Come on. Yeah, I tell you, Hard Day's Night, I saw it and I immediately went down to get my um, a mate from next door but one, Stephen Peters, and we I brought him round and I said to my mum, have you got any sort of buckets and sort of you know pans and have formed our first imaginary band after that as well <laughs> literally I'm playing a tennis racket in front of the mirror he's playing buckets and that was the first ever band wow well, so it's imaginary one so Mike Peters he, they live two doors away from you yeah Wow, and that was in real down in um, North Wales. In North Wales, yes. Yeah. So you're a Leeds fan. How's that come about, mate? I know you. I'm going to be asking you all sorts of questions here, mate. I'm going to put you on the spot. So how did a Leeds fan come about? Um, Leeds fan. Everybody else supported Man United, uh, Liverpool, uh, Everton. Yes. Man, no one, no one supported Man City in those days. Um, so I wanted to be different, and I liked the kit, and they had these like we, you we know were, great socks. We were just saying I had the kit with a number seven. They had no. that little flag on the on the uh, outside of the, the leg, didn't they? I tried to buy some of these recently on eBay because I was thinking I convinced I really wanted the numbers off the socks. Yes. I thought it was one of the best fashion sort of. Did you have sport. some? No, I never got any. <laughs> Believe it, no, even in the original days, no, Back no, I didn't know Eddie, mate. So I had it before the great Eddie McDonald from the alarm. Now, this is the Griff Griffin show, keeping it live on 365. And as you're all aware, I play what I want, but today I'm playing songs brought in by the great Eddie McDonald. So, this is one from your uh, case of cool tunes, my friend. Can you introduce this one and tell me why you've chosen this? Uh, I chose this song because this is the first time I ran away from home. I broke my mother's heart, she didn't clue where I'd gone to. I'd gone to Liverpool with my mate John, and we went to see. I thought the best band since the Beatles. And this is just play it. There we are, mate. Brilliant stuff, Eddie McDonald. Oh. Now, what year? Do you, what would you? What year would you say that was? Seventy-three, maybe. It's nineteen seventy-three. Yeah, it is nineteen seventy-three. Well done, mate. So you you ran away to Liverpool to see that band. I did. I literally cashed in a, um, I think a, a savings account to go see him. I must no, have, I got into so much. Trouble to say the least doing that because my mum didn't know anything about it. And I make my mate John, we'd got the tickets, gone to it, gone to the gig. And imagine, can you imagine at that age that you don't know where your kids are? We got back on the mail train next morning. I have never been in so much trouble in my entire life. Really? Come from. I couldn't believe it. It was on tea. It's a, it's a, a moment you get. So if you'd have told them you were going to go, would they have said yes no, and given their blessings? They, they would like thirteen to Liverpool from well, they would, Wales. Without that, mate, you wouldn't be sitting here now. No, that, was, that's probably influenced you. It changed my whole life. I tell you why because I was. They were the, the top of their game, number one in the charts, biggest selling band since the Beatles. The crowd. I I came out with no voice, no hearing. And I'd seen my first ever mirror ball, yeah. which with, and then also the lights coming off Noddy Holder's hand, all yeah, the mirrors. Yeah, yeah. It literally changed my life. That concert put me on. So on the if, road if you to hadn't music. run away, you wouldn't be sitting here now, basically. No. Really, we're, no. we're like, I'm, Not I'm in pleased. A million years, so I'm thank pleased. You boys. I'm pleased you ran away, then Eddie, mate. I'm pleased that you did that. Otherwise, you wouldn't have made the music you made. So, have you ever met the boys? Um, yeah, I have. Is it a story I've, you can share? <laughs> it's no. It was the most fearful moment in my life. We were sitting on a plane going to see uh, the, Mon- the Montreux sort of music festival. Queen was sitting in the in front of us. Um, so was Adamant, Spando Ballet, Madness. You, you well know, and Slade were in the row behind me. I could not for one moment turn around. Were you starstruck? No, absolutely. <laughs> There's no way I could talk to my heroes. <laughs> What do you say? I couldn't say a bloody word. I was literally no. they were uh, the Noddy was behind me. The rest of my band were chatting away. I just couldn't. I, they probably must, thought I had a problem. You must have met so many people in your life, stuff. Well, that was the, that was the only time you've been starstruck. Just absolutely, I couldn't. I couldn't. No, I couldn't do it. Well, and did you in the end? No. Nope. <laughs> but later days, I got to work with Noddy on Nobby's nuts. Nobby's on the peanuts. Photographing Nobby's nuts. Oh, because you are now a photographer, are you not? I am indeed. You come, come, come from it. Yes, yeah. indeed. And that's another story, <laughs> indeed. That's an, well, what a great life you've had. Uh, the, uh, we went to see the boys on Saturday, didn't we? Michelle with one L sitting behind me. Say hello, Michelle. Hello. Yeah. Hello, Michelle. <laughs> 
We went to see the boys on Saturday, and Matt Dangerfield, uh, who's going to be on my show on Wednesday, uh, he's been one of my idols since I was 15 or 16, and I went to cuddle him, and I gave him a big cuddle, and uh, there was a, his manager was there, he doesn't like being touched, mate, and I couldn't help it, because he was, he was one of my idols when I was younger. Anyway, here, this is the Griff Griffiths Show, keeping it live on 365, and as you're all aware, we play um, our legacy artists and some great new tunes. This is a new single, and I'm going to ask Eddie to introduce this, please, my friend, and tell, it's just up here on the left, Eddie. This is Million Miles Away by Eddie and the Hot Rods. I love that. That's the new one. That's the yes. I think it's around our foot. That's the new one from Eddie and the Hot Rods. That we was good. We were singing along at the end. Yeah, we well. were. I've, I've only heard really that. That's the third time I've yeah. heard that. You were singing along to the chorus yeah. there, Eddie. That's a great pop song. Well can't done. You be a good hook chorus. Well done, no, Simon exactly. Bailey, mate. You was a great guest last week. And uh, they're off on tour very soon. I think they're going on tour. Well, there's a few dates coming up. Um, I would mention those when I've got them written down in front of me. So, Eddie McDonald, let me just give you this again, mate. Yes! <laughs> so, mate, when did you start playing guitar? No. Uh... Good question. Round... I know you were, you were playing tennis tennis racket, weren't you? Yeah, I know. I moved on from the tennis racket. Um, didn't Honestly, it didn't sound much better when I first started. Um, basically, I started around about the age of four, 13, 14. Now, did you have lessons? <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually... Should you have done? <laughs> well, one of the songs I'm going to play after the next song is, is the song that I literally... When you do your bleeding fingers, you're a drummer. Yeah, I'm a drummer, right? yes, yes. You know all the bruises you're going to get. Yeah, and I, I still with, in, in presence of two drummers. Yes, today. you are indeed. Because so Michelle behind me, she's a drummer. Yeah. Holding this whole thing together. All yeah. together like. <laughs> yes. And literally, so you get, in, when you get your first calluses on your fingers, when you play day in, day out, you've got to have a song that you sort of basically, what's the word I'm looking for here? You, you It becomes your hardening fingers. Yes, okay, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yes. And, um, yeah. That's it. I was about fourteen, I think thirteen, fourteen. Well, you've got your guitar with us here. You've got your twelve string here. We've, done a, we've had a little, uh, we've had a little sound check earlier, and, you, and it sounded beautiful. Now you're going to be playing that live in the studio for us, oh, mate, yeah, aren't you? Indeed, yeah. If, if you don't mind, yeah. <laughs> That'd be brilliant stuff. <laughs> now, so uh, and then you never had lessons. Do you remember your first ever gig? You remember the first band you were in? Yeah, I do. And it's it was quite a legendary gig in North Wales because it had um, my old singer Mike was there, my drummer Nige was there on stage um, with you or in all, the audience? Yeah, all, no, all on the stage at one time. There was um, Carl Wallinger from Will Party was there. Um, Glyn used to be in another band, and Steve Oldfield, another guy who's played with as well. So wow. literally, we and, and the local paper, the Real Journal, the Real Journal <laughs> came down yes. to take a picture of the future of rock and roll. Wow! Did, did you think they got it right? Uh, no, the Real Journal hated us. <laughs> They really did. We were the only band to get on top of the pops, right? That the Real Journal hated? Yeah, they hated us. I don't know why they didn't like our band at all. And we were on page seven. We're, get a load of this. We're on top of the pops, okay, in the UK. Okay, to us in real, that was a bloody big deal. We got, I think, page 17. A man on it lost his dog got on the front page. No, mate. So did they not support you at all? Surely. It yeah, would have been... Problem. It should be local boys done good, shouldn't it? Yeah, I think what happens, I once said, um, I called real... I think, I think it was a one-horse town, but it only had three legs. <laughs> <laughs> And it's the reason why we're in London, not in real. And that's and everyone's hated me ever since. I mean, it's now yeah, we, we've got I people. Got li- well we, Eddie, we've got people to listen to us all over the world. We've got people in Holland, France, but Belgium, not real. Germany, probably not in real. No, and they're if, turning off. With everybody. <laughs> I just apologise to the people in real. I love, I love real. I grew up there. It was brilliant. Do you ever get back there, mate? Um, I, I, what's my mum Do they throw no. stuff at you when you go back? <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> or, uh, uh, it's a strange thing. We grew up in a seaside town. The best place you could grow up because in the summer, it's me- amazing. Yes. Right, you know what I mean? Yes. And then you got so much to do. You've got jobs, you've got everything else, and it's fantastic. And in the winter, it's your playground. Right, yes, yeah, So yeah, what, yeah. You know, what more could you ask? So did you, did you dream about rock and roll lifestyle and moving to the city? So after you saw the Beatles and after you had your first gig, was it like, I've got to be in a band, we've got to make this work. So we're going to play this next tune, then we'll come back to it. We're going to ask you a few more questions. So the next song I've got up here, this is the Griff Griffiths Show, playing it, keeping it live, I play what I want, put it down, playing songs, bullshit by the great Eddie McDonald. Can you introduce this next one? Tell me why you've chosen this, please, sir. Hello. This is by my, I think, my favourite rock star of all time because he's, I think, the coolest guy who can wear shades. The Mr. Ian Hunter and Mott the Hoople. This is Cherry B. And in case you didn't know it, I am a poet. 
And you're listening to The Griff Griffith Show on 365 Radio. And you know what? He plays what he wants. Yes, indeed, I play what I want. Now, we're in the studio here, this three of us is myself, uh, the great Michelle Bibonel, and Eddie McDonald. We were singing away to Mott the Hoople. They were a brilliant track. That's rock and roll, isn't it, mate? That, to me, was life change. I mean, the Mott album, oh, my God. I mean, to be honest with you, my, I love Bowie, and I love Mick Ronson, and I love Mott the Hoople, and that was the best combination. I mean, it's when everybody got it. Yeah, oh, absolutely, mate. I mean, we're st- I mean, you can play that now, and people, youngsters would sing along. So that's yeah. just a classic track, isn't yeah, it? It's a beautiful Did you ever song. play with those? Did you ever meet those boys? No, 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 no. I've never met any of those. Um, no, never met any of them. But I've been to see them. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I, yeah, I went. Yeah. I went to see uh, when Mick Ronson got together with Ian Hunter, and they played uh, the Dominion Theatre. I was down the front, and honestly, I were you a fan? <laughs> I'm in awe. So listen, my friend. So when you were growing up, did you have? Did you, did you think to yourself, right? I've got this rock and roll bug in me. I'm going to make it in the music industry. Or did you have a? Did you have a trade? Did you go to college or anything? Or did you always want to be a guitar player? No, I'd, honestly, to be honest with you, it's like music. It, it, it's a, it's the biggest drug. I mean, if if you love music, it it consumes you hundred percent. Absolutely, nothing else matters. It was about what records coming out that week. Reading all the music press, you literally you you drink every bit of information that you can get, you know, your hands on, and uh, you just yeah, that's it. It consumes your life. Literally. Can you can you remember writing your first song, Eddie? No, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can, it's really sad. This, but I can remember one thing. I was the first person in my school to have a pair of platform shoes. And also, uh, stop uh, laughing over there. Yeah, no, honestly, <laughs> and, uh, on. <laughs> I was the first person to wear glitter on my face. Oh, really? and I think all of it was in possibly the same week. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. think can you imagine that? That was like, whoa, no, it's really out of order. But I'll tell you what, I thought. I which are, which, which, by the choice of your songs there, you brought some great songs in. Now, I've been playing these. Now, when you, there's a couple of ones a bit further down, one of my favourite ever albums. But you've got, as a band here, because I'm actually playing on occasions with uh, a status quo tribute act, would you believe? Now, the guy in the band, who Michelle knows very well, he is a Rick Parfit character. He looks more like Rick Parfit than Rick Parfit. <laughs> and he, he, actually, he actually lives next door to Francis. Francis Rossi, would you believe? That must be spooky. It is. He's up in, up in, up in Pearly. So, listen, it's the Griff Griffith Show. I play what I want, but I'm playing songs today, but by the great Eddie McDonald from The Alarm. And can you introduce this one, please, Eddie, and tell me why you've chosen it. It's a classic. Francis Rossi, you owe me, because I bled to this. This is the song that I used to learn to play guitar. I actually le- I bought this awful guitar from the shop in Rill that was the most painful guitar. It was a semi-acoustic, a red one. It looked beautiful. Have you still it got it? It was a nightmare. God, no, it's, no, it's a piece of junk. <laughs> But if you're going to learn on something, learn on junk, because if you can learn to play on that, you can learn to play anything. And honestly, this one song I'm going to play, I spent hours learning this song. Did it give you blisters? I, got, I bled to oh, it. You bled to it? I bled to it. I <laughs> bled for this song. If it wasn't for you bleeding for this song, maybe we wouldn't have the great Eddie McDonald sitting in the studio. Brilliant choice of tracks. Brilliant choice of tracks, mate. So how long did it take you to master that? Yeah, that brings the pain back. Honestly, <laughs> the amount of hours spent... <laughs> honestly, that was it. I mean, it, once I'd sort of got my head around there, how they did that, Yes. I thought, right, I can start now to busk playing the guitar. And but did you? Um, yeah, I, mean, I, I did <laughs> every gig you did in, in school at that point, you were playing that song. Of course, mate, of course. Now, you, you, you eventually got round to actually playing with those live at Wembley, didn't you? Now, you were just yeah. saying, you've got a status quo story. Now, can you share that with us? As long uh, as it's the three, six, five years, don't get too upset. Share the story, Eddie. The story is this. Okay, we got, you know, um, some of you may know that I obviously followed the alarm that we were very fortunate enough to play the, uh, the last ever gig um, with Queen at Wembley and Quo. And, uh, yeah, it was a momentous day. Obviously, following Live Aid, they came back and did these shows, and it was absolutely amazing and um, incredibly nervous beforehand, but it was great. And I knew my mother was a real sort of um, Quo fan, so I brought her down for the actual uh, the gig. We, we did two two days there at Wembley, and it was brilliant. So um, I, I can remember at the time thinking, where's my mum gone? And mum, I, said to, I said to the guys in the band, I said, have you seen my mum? She went, no, no, no. And one of the girlfriends walked in and said, um, I've just seen your mum going into Quo's caravan. <laughs> <laughs> it's covering up all sorts of images in my head, mate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, I cut a long story short. When she got about, I said, where have you been? She went, uh, status Quo's caravan. I went, uh, yeah, okay, uh, Why? 
Oh, she goes, oh, I read somewhere in a magazine that they really love cupcakes. Now, she'd been carrying this plastic bag around with her all day long. And I'm thinking, oh, what's in the... No, I didn't, I didn't ask what was in the bag. I just assumed she had you know, something in it. I don't know what. The woman stuff. Literally, so yeah. She, literally, she went into the caravan to give... And of course, the guys went, oh, great, they bought us cupcakes. Wow. So no wonder they played that well that day. Wonderful stuff, mate. This is a brilliant... As long as it's not a name for something else. Yes, I've, I've it, yes. It could be... It they could, might be dope cakes, and she might be taking in some weird... I, I don't know. know. I mean, honestly, she, yeah. She, Did she come out with a smile on her face, Eddie? She came with <laughs> a spring and a stride. <laughs> It's the Griff Griffith Show, keeping it live on 365. Now, as you're all aware, we play our legacy artists and we play some great new tunes. Eddie from The, um, the Alarm. Can you introduce this next song for me, please, sir? Up there on the left-hand side, mate. OK, this is Somewhere Beyond the Rainbow from Chords UK. Go, guys. <laughs> Hi, this is Brett Martini from Voice of the Beehive, I Ludacris and the Marines, and you're listening to the wonderful Griff Griffith Show, and guess what? He can play whatever he likes. Yes, I can. Do you, do you like that one by the calls there? I think they, they, they played with you, didn't they? No, I'll tell you what, we started out as a mob band, right? As and my first band, 17, was sort of, well, mob band, I think we, we were a bit late to the party, but um, we played with Dexies, we played with, um, who else we played with as well? We played with Secret Affair. Did you Hastings, indeed? Yeah. Wow. We did quite a lot of gigs. We, in, did you get signed? Uh, no, we didn't. We did everything we could to get signed, um, but unfortunately it wasn't good meant to be not as a mod band anyway so how did it how did the alarm come about then so that was a, you were in a mod band set of the 17s and that how, was the same band and it was the same band where you just moved on you morphed did you yeah we became a futurist band for about a week um <laughs> what's a futurist band Eddie? We, even, like, we even opened a nightclub called the gallery in real because we need to make enough money to actually get our first sort of um record off the ground we opened a club in real yep and um if you could see what I can see. Get, <laughs> we've got, we, the, 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 there's no heat in the heat. Is we've got no the heat. It's the coldest day of the year. <laughs> we have <laughs> got. So we've honestly. got Michelle with one L coming in with various. Look, what's the size of that? Mind his guitar. This is live radio. Literally. If that explodes, Eddie, it's going to explode and kill the pair of us, mate. So it's very nice to meet you, son. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> This is what live radio should be, because literally we are freezing everything off of it. Listen, I'm wearing a pair of shorts. I'm covered in puppy fat. That's what, that's what my idea is. I'm a skinny whatever. And I tell you what, at this point, I'm thinking, we my God, freezing. I'm trying to warm my hands up. Oh, Go on, yeah, you I, can I, sort I, it's going. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Well, whilst, whilst we're, sort, whilst we're trying to sort something, because we're going to have you playing live in the studio in about 10 minutes' time. Uh, we're going to be phoning the great Alex um, Patterson Churchyard about his film Mosaic, the horror film Mosaic, in about half an hour's time. And before, but we, we can't get Eddie McDonald to play guitar until we warmed him up oh, so we're going to try and sort some heating out here so before we do shall we introduce the next song of yours shall we have I'll tell you what we'll have why don't we have this one here up on the left hand side right. mate introduce this one why have you chosen this Eddie well because all the songs I played today are basically a the, my desert island moment which all these are life changing right and then of course this band came on I saw them on Granada Reports with Tony Wilson and, uh, well, this is the B-side of God Save the Queen, but I think it's probably one of the best songs that no one who knows the Pistols know. <laughs> That's what we want. Wilson Sex Pistols. Never mind the bollocks, mate. This is the Griff Griffith Show, keeping it live on 365. Now, let's, can we all just not leave the door open and stop? <laughs> <It's> chaos. <laughs> Go away, Don. Uh, this is, is this not, Dad? Yeah, is this dad this dad is me, Daddy. Yeah, he's just coming he's in. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> All happening we're now. Live. It's a real family we're, affair. We're, we're live on air, John. We're live right now, my old mate. Right, this is the Griff Griffith Show, keeping it live on 365. So, Eddie, listen, should we let these... I'll tell you what do we'll do. you know do. We've got more electric going on. We're going to take out all the fuses in Croydon at this rate. Right? This is the Griff Griffith Show, oh, keeping it... going to go up now, I'll tell you. It is indeed. Now, I'll tell you what we'll do. Whilst we're sorting out this, because the, 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 the heat's gone in the studio, can you believe that? It's the Griff Griffith Show, keeping it live on 365. Now, as you know, I play what I want, but today I'm playing songs brought in by the great Eddie McDonald. Now, Eddie, whilst we're sorting out this next, introduce this. This is one of my favourite ever albums. So introduce this, please, mate. Yeah, this is a band that I actually went... The first band that I ever went on tour with is yep. literally the Rich Kids. I literally... I I heard them after the Pistols, and basically Glenn Matlock formed this with Midgeor and um, Rusty Egan and Steve New. Yes, he was in the... Actually, don't, don't close the door! Don't, don't, the don't door. close the door. It's actually getting really warm, though. 
So literally, I went on tour with them, and um, uh, I just literally followed every gig they did. And yes. this, again, this, this was a life-changing moment as well, because when I came back off the tour with following the Rich Kids, I went to meet my neighbour, Mike Peters, and said, uh, look, I want to form a band. He, he'd been in a punk so band So when you said you went this. on tour with the Rich Kids, you were, you were I, was, I was a fan, yeah. And you were just a fan? Yeah, I oh, followed I them around, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, in, it, Didn't we, they write some brilliant pop songs? Because they, they, they were in between sort of the new wave and the punk, but they were, they were writing songs with harmonies, great vocal yeah. great vocal leads, and they were... Because sometimes the punk audience didn't really warm to them, did no, they? No, they hated them. And this is the strangest thing, because the punks hated them, um, and they, they didn't really find a new audience. And the funny thing was, as well, because it... To me, it was a perfect combination because um, I'd always like mid. Uh, mid you was in Slick. Um, the Slick, obviously, yeah. Glenn Matlock. I'll dedicate to you. That what a great pop song that was. It was basically the Rollers in the sky, <laughs> yes, isn't it? They were. But um, literally, I, again, uh, um, of course, Mick Ronson produced. Who like my all-time guitar hero actually produced the album as well. I don't think it was the best album well, he could have made. The, the... He produced the Rich Kids album, yeah. Well, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's the best production in the world. No, really. and I don't understand why, because if you think all the Bowie, Lou Reed, everything he did with Bowie was unbelievable, and his own records as well were good, but for some reason I don't... It, they weren't... The songs were good, but Brilliant I think it was like that. But on tour, live, they were amazing. And I and again, I... I never saw them. Were they great, great live? Yeah, awesome. Because I remember one, I was in, I can't, somewhere in the Midlands, I went up to Midge Yule after the gig, like a fan. I went up to him and said, look, Midge, oh, I love your songs. And he goes, you know, do you play? I said, yeah, I do. I, I'm trying to write songs. And he goes, well, what are you doing here? I said, oh, I just love your band. He goes, go home, write your own songs. I don't know, I've never met Midge since, but literally, again, there's another one of those people who comes into your life and changes it. And when I finished, got off the tour, that's when I went and said to Mike Peters at the time, I said, look, I want to form a band, a bit like the Rich Kids. And um, and the, but I, the two bands I've sort of really loved musically were the sort of Buzzcocks and the Rich Kids. And so when we started writing songs, basically, that was it. That was my sort of the way they yeah. compo- composed the songs, you know. Um, Ever Fallen in Love is like, I think, one of the greatest pop songs of all it's time. Just, it's a brilliant pop song. Yeah. And, and that was it. And I just wanted to write songs like that and play live. And that yeah. was it. And then so when was, you say you went on tour with the Rich Kids, how, how, would you follow them around? Follow yeah, I followed them all around the country, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I was seven, 17, 18, going 18 at the time. So literally, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm in agreement with you, well, mate. I used, that... to sleep in, you know, I used to sleep in railway stations, you know, bus shelters. I had no money because literally, I, you know, I was... But that's a proper music like fan. Let's introduce yeah. it. Let's have some of this. So introduce this for me then, please, mate. This is a song I thought, when I heard this, it, it, I, it re invented how I saw songs written. I thought the chord progression in this song, because people, you know, musicians who write songs, they listen for chord progressions in songs. And this, I thought, to me, was... They'd taken sort of pop right into a new, a new level, and I think it's a very clever song. <laughs> Hi, this is Den Barry, singer with the Glorias, and you're listening to the Griff Griffiths Show on 365. He's the king of the road, and he plays what he wants. Yes, indeed, I do play what I want. Now, <laughs> imagine all sort the of heat in the studio. It's I said, live radio. It's what keeps me going. It really is. Now I'm going to play a track here by the great uh, Alex Patterson Churchyard, and I know it's not by the great. It's chosen by him. He's the director and producer of the horror movie Mosaic, which I am appearing in along with Michelle Wanell, and I'm going to be speaking to him as soon as this record's over. Stop. Indeed. That's, that is the sign that I've got it right. <laughs> Hello, Alex. Hello, Alex. Yeah. Is that Alex? Is this Griffey? You're live on 365, mate. How are you, my friend? I'm good, you? I'm very well. Say hello to Eddie from the Alarm. Say hello, mate. Go on, say hello. Hi, Alex. How are you doing, fella? Hi, man. I'm good, thank you. Excellent. Now, Alex, tell people who you are and why I've, why I've, why I've invited you onto the show, my friend. Oh, yeah, so, so uh, yeah, my name's Alex Churchyard. I'm uh, a filmmaker. I make low-budget horror films and made a film called Mosaic, which is premiere this weekend at the Horror on Sea Film Festival on Saturday the 13th of January, 8pm. And you had a, a small cameo in it. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> and also Michelle with one L. She's in it as well, isn't she, Alex? Yes. He is indeed. Now, Alex, do you do you actually just do you write the script? Are you or you are you just say the, the director and producer? How does it work? Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, um, co-wrote it. So, I wrote it with a few other people because, like, with Mosaic, it's um, it's an anthology. So, it's loads of different stories tied together. Yep. So, I wrote some of them. Uh, there, there was four writers in one Mosaic. Okay. And is, is there one main theme that runs through the runs through the, the film, or is it just a lots of pe- lots of different stories all added together, or is there one sort of character that that exists in every scene? So what 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 we have um, is a like police procedural investigation, and the, the sort of storyline is that these police officers are looking at all these different cases, which have all different, you know, because they're all um, like serial killers and they look at all these different cases and they can't really see the connection because there's no, there's no connection through the victims and the the different killers. But there's one piece of evidence that keeps popping up at every single crime scene. Don't give too much away, Alex, mate. Don't give too much away. Oh, I won't, I'm not going to, I won't say the twist, but like there's uh, the, the police element is what links it all together. Wow! No, myself and Michelle were one else. We came down to it was a, the the, um, the Rumford. Where was it, Michelle? Where was it? Where did we go? We went to Rumford um, Shopping Centre, and they closed it for the evening so that we could do our filming down there. And uh, I thought that we, I thought you were going to do close ups of me, but you put me in the right in the background carrying a bag, and you done loads of the beautiful Michelle, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> you are, you are. <laughs> I can understand that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alex, so um, we're going to be coming down there to the premiere on Saturday, and uh, what sort of time does it start? And uh, uh, we, we've seen the trailer on YouTube, and it looks very good, doesn't it, Michelle? I'm too scared to even watch the trailer, because, you know, I'm terrified of horror. Uh, she, she, Alex, she is absolutely terrified of the horror genre. She really is. I might be screaming in the, uh, <laughs> in the premiere. It, it will be. It's, uh, it's a good mix of, like, comedy and horror, so there's, like, a fair bit comment in there as well so hopefully yeah it's a very tongue-in-cheek thing so will you be there will you be there wearing your dinner suit for the premiere uh probably not a dinner suit but i'll I'll be in uh, a shirt maybe maybe well do do we Um, (laughs) do we have to dress up mate i mean do i have to put a suit on uh, it's it's, it's, uh it's a horror festival so there'll be like guys in you know hoodies and their uh you know horror t-shirts and stuff it's you know it's it's not it's not a it's not like a fancy. A fancy I, I, okay. Now, so, how did you get involved with the horror scene there, from my friend? What, you know, do, do, is that purely what you do? Is it the horror stuff? Well, I've, I've always been into horror, and I've always wanted to, you know, make films. So it kind of made sense. Um, and I, I'm just lucky enough as well that with um, horror on sea, I'm actually from Southend. That's where the festival is. Uh, so you know had films in there for quite a few years now and really fortunate because it's such a good festival. Yeah, so, so when, when does the festival start and uh, how does one get tickets for that, my friend? So the festival starts this Friday, Friday the 12th, um, and it runs through to the Sunday and then they, they do it again the weekend after as well. You can get tickets online, like Horror on Sea. Um, and our, our film is on the 13th, Saturday the 13th at 8pm. We will definitely be seeing you there Saturday at Thursday. We won't be covered in fake blood, though, mate. I won't be carrying a severed head in with me, but I'm, so, <laughs> I'm certainly looking forward to the horror movie there. So say say hello and goodbye to Michelle Wynell. Come on, she's just coming with a coffee. Go say hello and goodbye. Go on, say hello. Hello, Alex. Oh, God, shout out to you. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, this, this is live radio. What could possibly go wrong? Right, my Everything. friend? Everything. Well, it has been going wrong this time of the day. Everything's going spooky. Now, I'm really looking forward to seeing you on Saturday, my friend. Uh, you, t- you have a great a great couple of days, and I'll see you at the weekend. Now, I've got I've got a track queued up for you, one of the two tracks that you uh, requested. So can you introduce this one for me, please, my friend? Yes, I think so. I think you're going to play uh, Hot Thoughts by Spoon. No, I am uh, indeed, mate. You take care, and I'll see you at the weekend. Bye, Alex. Cheers, mate. See Bye, ya. Alex. Bye. Thank um, Alex there for uh, being a great guest, uh, quick, telling us quickly about Mosaic, a film that we're both in, Michelle Wabonel, aren't we? We are, yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be going to the, uh, the premiere down there. Uh, that'll be the third premiere I've been to in the last six months. How famous am I? Now, this is Griff Griffiths Show, keeping it live on 365. As you know, we champion our legacy artists here, and we absolutely love this one. This is New York by Republica. Hey. We 
We absolutely love that here at uh, 365 Now. Saffron's going to be coming as a guest very soon. I will let you know more about that. Now, it's going to be an honour and a pleasure. We finally got some heating in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie's hands are warmed up enough that you can play this song. Now, Eddie, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you introduce this. So tell me why you're here in the studio playing this stuff here and give us a little bit of insight and history into what's coming up. Well, I'll tell you what, it's really, thanks for having me in, first of all. It's, it's an honour, my been, friend. Yeah, and likewise, it's been really, I've really enjoyed my time with speaking to you both as well. It's been great. I mean, um, well, one of the reasons here is a pure, honest plug. Um, I, along with uh, two other fellow musicians... Billy Liberator and Paul Evans will be playing a show, like a one-off show at the moment, at the Troubadour on Wednesday the 17th of January. And uh, the reason it's come about is because it's 40 years nearly, um, nearly not nearly to the day, that uh, we released, oh, the, the Alarm released, um, the album Declaration. Wow. And um, it changed our lives, that record. I of mean, course. It, it went around the world, it took us around the world on an amazing journey for the next sort of 10 years, really. And uh, I just thought I'd love to sort of, I don't know, come back to some of the songs and play them. And put my spin on it a little bit as well, because I wrote, well, probably all the or well, co-wrote all the songs on the record, bar one. And I just thought I'd love to sort of revisit those songs after a long time. Has it's that been really a challenge, nice. Eddie? It has it been? It is and continue to be. I was saying to you, I was, we were laughing yeah. off air about this. Yeah, saying that, we were. Um, Eddie's famous short term memory. I've always struggled with people's names because sometimes people think you know you don't introduce people or you don't like that. But I've always struggled with short term memory. So every time I, it's like with songwriting. The reason I can come back to writing songs is because every time I come back, it's slightly different. By the way, starts my guitar back yeah, yeah, the yeah, chair. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to hopefully play it. And of course, you're, 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 now, you're now naked on the stage, just you and your guitar, yeah. so you've had to change a few guitar parts, yeah. you change the vocal to your way of singing. What else have you had to do? Is that, because you're on your own now, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. So you're basically, you're, first of all, you're relearning the songs, and then you're thinking, right, adapting them to suit my voice, adapting to my guitar technique, and also you are going to be in front of an audience. So in other words, you want to put on a really good show for people. Um, I want people to really enjoy it, but also hear the songs differently. Because sometimes when you write a song, y you just do automatically what comes to mind with your talent as a hand, your learning, you, and you play it how you think is right. And sometimes when you look at that song years later, you're going to go, maybe there was more melodically in it. Um, and you can adapt it to suit you know, what, you, what you do or to your skill set. Are you nervous about Wednesday, my friend? Um, or is that the wrong question to ask? I'll probably before I go on stage. Always, I was nervous every time. You know, wherever we were playing from um, to two people once down in Torquay, mm -hmm. to about um, 150, 60,000 people in Newburgh Ring. Yes, um, and you was equally you, nervous. Equally nervous because you, you, <laughs> no. those the, what they call the so-called butterflies in your tummy yes. kick in. I, it's great because it, it, that gets you over those first couple of chords. That nerves get you going. It gets the adrenaline pumping, and you know what I mean. And then, because you've got to try and hold it together as well. Yeah, that's the thing. Is it's you've got to control. You can't just let it all go on the first song. So on Wednesday the seventeenth at the Troubadour. So yeah. there's there's three of you. So are you going to be playing live together, or is it yeah, three we, of you individually? We do, first of all, we do injuries. Um Paul Evans will go on first, and then Billy Liberator as well. He's playing a lot at the moment, he's, and he's really good as well. I mean, Paul's songs are great. Billy's songs are brilliant, and and then I'm going to go on and do Declaration. Um, and then I'll play a couple of Small Town Glory songs, which is obviously my new band, and um, as well at the end. And then we're going to get together and do six songs that really we all believe changed our lives in terms of music. Wow! Don't reveal these songs right now, no, but, they, but they well, all, they'll they... be a surprise on the night. Cause yes, because every one of them will have a story. Yes, um, and I want everybody to tell the story in their own time and in their own way. Now that sounds like an absolutely wonderful. I tell you what, why don't I'd love to come along? Uh, I mean, if we sell tickets available, I'd love to come along and see that. Now we'll, be, we'll tell you about how to get tickets after this, but I'm going to introduce now playing live in the studio here at Three Six Five on the Griff Griffith Show, Eddie McDonald. Uh, the song I'm going to play is called The Deceiver, and this is off the Declaration album. It goes like this. You are the power and the glory
Like the rise and fall of this British Empire You make me sick with your conceit You are, you are the weakness sickness that's in our soul you are you are you are the maker you are called greed and you're a cheat you are you are you are the deceiver You are not welcome in my life You are the maker of illusions You break up every dream we've ever made And as I rise up from the ashes You raise your ugly head up You know shame Too long, too long you have lain there Too far, too long, too strong Break your hold. You are, you are, you are the maker. You are called greed and you're a cheat. You are, you are, you are the deceiver. Absolutely fantastic. I'm going to have to give you that. Yes! <laughs> Every time. Now, didn't that... I, I, that sounded absolutely superb through my headphones. Did that sound brilliant, Michelle? That was incredible. That was incredible. Thank Honestly, you. mate, that was wonderful. Now, now, so we're going to be hearing some of that when we come along on Wednesday uh, down the Brompton Road. That's Honestly, so... I don't really know what to say. That's taken my breath away, mate. Honestly, that really has. That's really kind. Thank you. It's, honestly, do you know what? It's, it, Wow. It's, sometimes it's songs. It's about that. I've always been into songs, and I mean, sometimes I love bands, but sometimes it's the song because songs change, change. They can change your life. Yes, change your that, mood. The, the lyrics there changes as well. everything. Now you can hear that with the playing with, with the band. It will be a completely different feel. It's like when we spoke about having Chris Pope from the Chords. He'd be playing his singer. The movie saw him playing live, which you have mm -hmm. acoustic, and all of a sudden it brings a completely different feel to it. It's space. I think as well. Sometimes as well, when I'm playing the song, I'm imagining. P periods of your life sometimes you, is that all lyrics, going through your mind yeah 100% yeah wow because you just it's places and times when we played it you know it was a special time in this place and another place or something happened after it someone will mention it so it must have been an absolute roller coaster of emotions and fun and no doubt there were some difficult times as well as some great times yeah. in there we recorded a video for this it was the first ever video recorded at uh, oh gosh um, uh, as birth marriages and deaths Somerset House. Yes. And, yeah, we recorded in uh, the, the big square in Somerset House well before they did festivals. And um, I finally got to meet one of my heroes as well because um, his wife was a makeup artist, Howard Devoto. Yes, I remember him. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah, Howard yeah. came down to the video shoot for that as well. Wow. And uh, it was great. We had a lovely evening. It was the most beautiful setting for so a that, video. When, that two and a half minutes you were just singing your songs there, you were, you were singing there, you came across yeah. absolutely perfectly, Eddie. But there was so much going through your mind with the memories. Always. yeah. It wow. just takes you on a journey. I was thinking about music. Everybody, went the first time they heard a song, where it was, the place, the setting, the people they were with, what they were drinking, 
you know, it was the moment music does that to people. Without it, a doubt. Now, I was going to go into it another... You. It does. Now, I was going to go into another track, but can you play another one for us live? Uh, yeah. Or do you want us to play another song? Oh. It's up to you, mate. Now, I know that you're just having a good drink of coffee. Now, are your hands warm enough? That, that was beautiful. <laughs> I just <laughs> wish everybody could have just listened to it live because yeah. I know it would sound brilliant on the it radio, was it, absolutely. but live, it was fantastic. It, it was indeed. If you get the chance to go and see the guys playing live, go, because it, it was it was. That amazing. was wonderful. It was wonderful. Look at that look. But all i got to say is thanks to Michelle for making the coffee. Yeah. It's been awesome. <laughs> So you didn't say I thanks. Was, hang on, you didn't the, say, hang on, you didn't say thanks for, for keeping the show together. No, right I off. don't. I'm not going to thank you for anything because I've been freezing my bits off here. Michelle went, yes. Michelle went and got the coffee. She Michelle found, went and got she, the blooming. She the found and, and she, she found three heaters. Uh, three heaters. Oh, I don't, I don't know, I get any praise. Three is a magic number. <laughs> I don't get any praise at all. All I can say is I really screwed your electricity bill. Yeah, no, I, just, I, just, mate, I don't mind. It's an honour having you here. Now, Dad, I would love you to play another song. Could you play another one for us now, mate? Or well, do you want to put another track on? It's yeah, up to you. I am. And this time I'm going to play you a new song. You right. do that. Right, right now, can I... Right, I'm going to leave you to introduce it then, my friend. You take it away, okay. Eddie McDonald. This song is called it Can't Stop the Waterfall. And this is a small town glory song. So I'm going to plug the future as well as I plug the past. Anyway, it goes like this. How do I start? Here we go. No, I'm not going to play that. I'm not going to play it. No, I'm going to play something it's, else. It's, 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 it's my show and Eddie plays what he wants. <laughs> I'm just trying to think. You know, sometimes you're, you're sitting here with a guitar and I'd love to play something. I'm trying to think, what am I going to play you? How am I going to play another song? Um, someone out there, I want someone. Do me a favour. If someone's listening to this right now, Send in a request and I'll play it. And I'll do my best to do it. Let's put another song let's on. Put, we'll let put another, another song on. Okay, okay, let's put another song on. Let's be controversial. Right, let's put one of your other songs on. I'll tell you what, we've we'll this, this is a Quiff Crivage show. I play what I want, but a down playing songs brought in by the great Eddie McDonald. So, Eddie, what's this next one I put up here on the turntable? And, and tell me why you've chosen this, please, sir. This is when we realise there's no longer, there's no future in this 17 being a mod band because we supported this band in Huddersfield. Oh, I love Huddersfield, amazing town. And I went to watch them for the first time, basically on the sound check, and they started off with this. All in donkey jackets, they ran to the front of the stage and they played this. <laughs> The Griff Griffith Show, keeping it live on 365. This proves that we're live. We are 28 minutes past six, uh, and it's on a Monday just to prove that we're live. Um, so then here we are. We've got the great Eddie McDonald. Yeah, we're rocking it. <laughs> you said, yeah, you, this is down to you, son. You said, anybody out there? Well, I've had three requests. I've had Perfect Day by Lou Reed. I've had uh, Walk on the Wild Side. Uh, by uh, well, that must be yeah that's a really weird as well isn't it yeah. and something by Sweet and also something by the Stones yeah. but what do you want to play mate come on you anything you want such a perfect day I'm glad I spent it with you cause it's such a perfect day you just keep, keep me hanging, hanging on. on come on guys hey, you just keep me hanging on Hey. <laughs> Give yourself a round of applause. I think we all need that. Yes. So, how, what's the what's the format on Wednesday then? Wednesday the seventeenth. Now we are going to make it the effort. We're going to finish our show here, yep. and we're going to shoot straight over to the Brompton Road. We want to come and give you some support awesome. and come along and see you, my friend. Yeah. So, um, what, what's what's the format on Wednesday, so my friend? Basically, we're going to do three different sets. So, basically, Paul Evans is opening, Billy Liberator on second, and he's. Re records great and Paul's you've got to please listen to their stuff online, it's fantastic. And um, then I'm gonna get on and do declaration and possibly two small ground talk there, yeah, small town glory songs, and then we're all gonna to get together at the end. I'm gonna do six songs, and then we're basically of our favourite songs that inspired us. Wow, no, and I'm not gonna ask you, you're gonna ask you off air so you can tell me. So and don't even tell me off air actually, but so they're gonna be cover numbers, are they? The, the, yeah. Like you brought into us today. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So songs, you know, that that you realise they, they they spoke to you 
beyond other songs. You know, it's not just a song that you like playing. It's a song that the reason why you got into music. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Now I've got. A, do, do you want to sing another song here, mate? Or do you want to play another one from your from your list? Yeah, up play there? one from the list, and I'll have a think of another song. Yes, so, any I, more requests? Um, I, absolutely. Keep them to yourselves. <laughs> I think, I think he's, he's playing guitar here with a pair of oven gloves on because he's so he's so, he's so <laughs> cold. <laughs> well, at the radio, I'm, I'm not going to get into this. Stuff. It's I'm, snowing I'm, here. Yeah, Honestly, it's, like, it's, it's, it's snowing in here yeah. on the coldest day of the year, Eddie, yeah. as well, isn't it? At any other we should day, be playing Christmas songs. It's more appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> but when you turned up on the doorstep here, mate, it was snowing. I thought you were one of the four awesome. horsemen in the apocalypse. <laughs> right, so... And this, right, now, we'll, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll play... This is the Griff Griffith Show. I'll play what I want, but the down playing songs brought in by the, the wonderful... And you've been a superb, great fun guest, Eddie. Can you introduce this one? Tell me why you've chosen this track, please, yeah, sir. Yeah, th this song is about the future. Because everyone talks about um, songs they've loved in the past. And this is a song that I love going forward because this is um, my favourite new artist of last year. Um, Tycho Jones and Tycho Nauts and it, it's, it hasn't got enough airplay and I don't know why it is not on everybody's sort of Spotify list. Please stick it on your Spotify list because when you see um, Tycho Jones perform he is he, he's, he is a star it just needs someone to find this guy find, please look him up he's an absolute star um, and it's, it just got to go and see them play live. And they're an underground band. They're playing lots of like Shoreditch Way in London. They're playing lots of sort of really secret gigs. How do you know these boys, then, mate? Basically, I went to see them. Um, I I know his dad really, really well. His dad um, is called Gareth Jones. And I've known, was, Gareth, I've known yes. Gareth for years and years. In fact, he was my right hand man. And um, he said to me, Come and see Tycho play. And I went, Yeah, okay. My expectations, I, I, I just didn't want to think, well, it's Gaz. And then I went there, and he blew blew me away. I said, he, honestly, you was really really surprised. Uh, honestly, God, on hands on heart, the guy blew me away. They were playing down at the river um, by the uh, what's it called uh, the uh, the council office. What's it called? The one on the Thames. Uh, yeah, I know City what you mean. Hall. Yeah, yeah, City Hall. Yes. They're down at City Hall, and they were, I think second on the or third on the, no, second on the bill, and they just blew me away. I just went, wow. And, and, does that, that, and does that take a lot to blow you away, does it, for a new band? Because you must have seen so many bands in your history. No, but it inspires you. I mean, you come off away from it. I was on the train on the way home. Um, I was talk, uh, talking to Heidi. Um, um, and I just said, what do you think? And she said, oh, it was brilliant. And I went, yeah, it was brilliant. I really, really loved it. Right, let's have a listen to this. We'll see what the 365 listeners think. This is Risk to My Reward, Tycho Jones. We're back on air. We're trying to choose what song Eddie's going to choose. And what, awesome. You don't know what you're going to sing yet. Now, first of all, we were listening to that there. I love that. That was Risk to My Reward by Tycho Jones. And apparently, they're very good live, and we should get out and see them. Is that true? Yeah, absolutely incredible. And one of the, uh, the best performers I've seen in, in years, honestly, on stage. He's, he's just a, he's a gift for the eyes to watch. Do, do, do you know what? we because we're. Going then? We, we get uh, we get we get we get to see loads of new bands here, and it really could being a musician for 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 fifty odd years of my sixty years of living, uh, it gives me a, such a great feeling knowing there's young kids out there that are still playing. They get out there, they foot on the monitor, they're playing rock and roll. You know, you can make a record now on your phone, Eddie, mate, in your bedroom. Yeah, exactly. But these people are proper out there in small clubs. You know, like we used to do when we were first started. You know, that two people in Torquay. Mm. You've, they're still learning their trade, which is great, isn't it? Very healthy for the music industry, isn't it? A hundred, honestly, a hundred percent. I just think you've got you've got to have new people coming through. And you also, as an artist, when you see you're inspired again, somebody comes along thinking that is why I got into music, and they, you know, inspired. It. And I saw, I went to the gig, and I really. I came home, I picked up my guitar when I, when I got in, I was trying to write a song thinking... Wow, well, so he, he yeah. inspired you! I want to write a song for Tycho. I think I've got a... I think I've got a song for him, but I don't know. He's probably going to go, I can't take a song off, Eddie. It's like... No, I, take, I take one off you, mate. I take one off you. Right, so what, listen, we've had loads of requests here, but basically, anything you want, you can play something from your new album, you can play something that you're playing at the weekend, you can play a cover number, it's up to you. If you don't want to play, you don't have to, but I'm putting you right on the spot because I've filled the room with radiators now. I've warmed it up so yes. much, Eddie. <laughs> so I'm going to play an old school... I'm going to play an old school one because I'm thinking... New songs, um, this is schoolboy era. And um, there's a certain 
Emma, who's going to really tell me off when I get home for not making a list. Right. And yes. I should have made a list and I didn't. <laughs> Every time I make a list, nothing goes wrong. When I don't make a list, I forgot my, you, you, I forgot my capo. You did? Severe, um, yeah, schoolboy error yeah. on my part. Um, but it means you're not going to forget it at the Troubadour on the 17th. That's what it means. Absolutely not. I'm literally going to, yeah, it will be round my neck. Yes. So, in its sense, I'm going to play an old school song, another one off Declaration. It goes like this. Born into a war and peace Forced to choose between a right and wrong Every man kills a thing he loves For better or for worse Face to face with a ragged truth Ripped up and torn in two The only thing's gonna save us now Savior from yourself Where were you hiding When the storm broke When the rain began to fall And the thunder and the lightning struck And the rain and the four winds did howl La 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 na 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 After old time building up Comes inevitable knocking down See, I've done it again. I've forgotten the lyrics. <laughs> this is why it's live. Emma's going to tell you off again for this, mate. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you've forgotten the lyrics, mate. If you are the great Eddie McDonald. You can do anything you want. This is the Griff Griffiths Show, keeping it live on 365. But the difference is, I won't stop live. <laughs> now, you are very... You're a kind man, <laughs> right? And you're not going to throw anything at me. No, no, no. But if, if we come along on Wednesday, the 17th at the Troubadour, you do that live, I'm going to throw... What should we throw at him? Cards. <laughs> So you have to bring your playing cards along. No, but playing cards in a tin. Yeah, because it goes. Because um, all cards are marked, all fates will collide. <laughs> the truth is a truth. Hey, the truth is surely a lie. The first time we ever did that, um, literally, uh, all the audience were through cards. Oh, they did. Stage. Everybody brought cards with them, and literally the whole place rained full of playing cards. Right. Wow. Except one, but someone threw it and it hit a certain member of the band. They didn't take it out of the pack. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm convinced it was still in the box. I'm convinced it was a journalist from Melody Maker or Sounds. One of them who didn't, or one enemy who didn't really like us. They thought this is an opportunity so that, that I'm not have... going to overlook. Yes, of course. He got away to illegally throwing <laughs> stuff at you because you asked him to do it. So did that happen after every gig since then? Did yeah, that, that it, 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 yeah, it was amazing. I really felt sorry for all the staff in the event. If you ever try to pick up a playing card off the floor, you want to try and pick up about thirty thousand packs of cards. But it's, off it's, it shows you that your fans loved you, yeah, mate. That's it's amazing. amazing. No. Do, 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 you, do you miss those tours at that times on the road and touring and those times on stage with the alarm, mate? You can't, honestly, it's not a job. It's not a vocation. It's a dream come true. It yes. was one of the things where you, you form a band and you really want to hear, you, you know, you, oh, I spent hours upon hours working on songs trying to, you know, I mean, that song came, I was literally listening to Going Underground by The Jam. I'm going underground, going underground, na 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 singing and the boys all shout no. for tomorrow. Where were you hiding <laughs> yeah. when the storm broke? Wow. When the because that inspired me. Same calls, to... but completely different tracks. No, Absolutely. No, oh, excuse me, no. No, no, I have to stop you there, Greg. Yes. It's not the same chord. Well, listen, it's well, I'm, I'm, I'm a drummer. Legally speaking, I'm a drummer. Uh, it's not the same chord. <laughs> but it's the same kind of feeling. And I was thinking, I want a song that makes me feel, and I want my audience to yes. get that feeling I got when the first time I heard that song. That's the sort of song I want people to go... Yeah, I can see why yes. they wrote the song. Because well, it's, it's, it's kind of, where were you hiding when the yes, storm broke? Yes, I mean, even the lyrics there, where were you hiding when the storm broke? It's, it's almost like romantic. It's like uh, uh, almost like a, a war, military kind of, puts the, the, the hairs on your arms. We could go and invade France after yeah. listening to that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it gives you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's, and it's what it, it's uplifting. I think what it is, it, it's like... Wh wh 
Weller had a great way of... He knew how the British psyche worked. He got into the working class, young persons. He could feel what they were feeling. Yeah, absolutely, mate. And the alarm, when they started out, we were all about listening to those feelings, you know, when we were doing on the, all the first gigs of the right to work, the right to march jobs. We did literally everything. But, but we the alarm were, and we played you, with the jam they? early, yeah. yeah. they moved you. It, it's, it, like, like, it was, we were passionate. Yes, we wore yes. it on our chair. We never tried to be... I don't know, um, we weren't left, we weren't this, we weren't that. What we did, we would try to be as honest about our feelings and how we felt. If we saw something, we'd call it out yeah. and we, we would add our support to it. But you, you, know? but you also said you, you were very, very, you worked very hard at it, you were serious about it, it was a, it was a yeah. very, you, you know, it, it, it was, it, it was yeah. your thing. You worked hard on it. it was your yeah, baby. we wore our. Obviously, I said we wore it on our. You know, we wore our colours. We, we were honest, and then we and we stayed true to ourselves to the end. Anyway, and that was it. And I was very proud of that. I, I can look back and I, I can play these songs today, and be as proud of them as when they left the guitar the first time round. And that's it. And that's that's the reason why I can stand up on stage after all this time. And really look forward to playing the songs. Oh, it's a wonderful! I tell you, what, what great guest you're turning into, mate. <laughs> Bless you. <for> that. <laughs> turn, yeah, turning into it's like it's, it's morphing into a new guest. He started off as a shit guest, and now he's morphed into a new guest. I did. <laughs> <laughs> now this is the this is the Griff, Griffith show. Now we, we we're going to give him a break from playing guitar there, and we have to play this song here because this is this is the great man's birthday. Yes, happy birthday to the great. David Bowie. Uh, this is the Griff Griffiths Show, keeping it live on 365. Well, what a great fun I've had in the studio today. There's all sorts of gone wrong. <laughs> all sorts of gone right. I mean, I've been, oh, God, what a great guest. You've, uh, been, you've been smiling all the way through, though, Eddie, mate. Honestly, great. And I've, I've been just informed about um, there's a very important announcement we need to make about um, Miserable Brian. Yes. I, I really hope you make a, a speedy recovery. Yes, he fell over. Is it, was it a fall? Yeah, well, I, well, I, I just heard that he fell over, but he's still miserable. He was probably he, 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 he was not going to wake up or get up from his fall being more happy. He's just he's a miserable bloke. At what age though? You, it's a thing, right? And, I think and you've he's had, ninety. No, but you've had this, isn't it? At what age do you fall over, or is it a fall? What do you mean? Yes. Oh, yeah, it's very important. Yes. It's a very important thing. Are yes. people out there going to go? What are you on about, mate? Yeah. What's he? What's he on about here? Well, there's a cut off point where you've fallen over. Always had a fall. No, I think I think he's just fallen over. I think he's just fallen yeah, over as well. Yeah, over. yeah, it's only as young as the lady you're feeling. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, it's uh, All right, like, Emma. <laughs> Well, I think it's, his wife passed away a few years ago. Oh, but no. Yeah, but we're going to play him this. So listen to this, Eddie. Listen to this. Miserable Brian, who, who, miserable Brian, who fell. <laughs> Now that's going to put a smile on his face, mate. Oh, life of Brian. The, the, the life of Brian. Yeah, listen, mate, mate, mate. Get get well soon, my friend. I will be seeing you sometime. We're going to sing it. the course of the year. What do you want to sing to him? Life of Brian, isn't it? Isn't it? What's the song? Oh, always look, look on, on the, the bright side. side of I can't whistle it now because I'm smiling. No, no. <laughs> Right now, so right, so we know what to expect. We come to see you, but we don't know what to expect because you're going to be playing together on stage for, with the uh, the other two boys, uh, Billy Liberator and Paul Evans. You're going to be playing six tracks that mean something to you. Yeah. So they're all going to be similar songs to the ones you brought in here. So they are you going to introduce those before you say them so, and say why they mean stuff? Yeah, we will. I mean, I think everybody's going to. We all know why we're going to do it, and the songs, how you know, how they sort of shaped our mu musical sort of. It sounds like it could be quite future. a romantic kind of evening, really, doesn't it? I want it to be a conversational piece. In a way, I, in a funny kind of way, I want it to be a bit of a roast. Yes. So, are you, are you opening up to the audience for yeah, questions? Oh, I would indeed? love to do that because I think if if and the thing about alarm fans, um, they probably go to um, a lot of um, gathering events and uh, mic events, but obviously. They might have some questions that aren't answered, and I'd love to be able to be as you know honest. Yes, they, indeed. So they can ask about the songs, ask about you know if if, if they've been playing this album for forty years, there must be questions. That yes, they would love of, to course. Ask. of course. And I just different. thought to open it to the audience, so I'd, I I might put a, a mic in the audience. Say, look, if you've um, got any questions about it, and uh, maybe lyrics, maybe the songs, maybe gigs, and like that. Any questions I've got, yeah. Well, that's got the makers of a fantastic because it's a, evening, Because it's, it's, it's a stripped-down, naked evening where you think to yourself, OK, if you've got a question, ask it. Will you, ask on, will you answer honestly? Honestly. 
<laughs> he's winking at me. <laughs> I know. I know it's the truth. Ah, why not? I yes. mean, at the end of the day, it, it might. It, this is a one-off event. Yes. I'm not going to do. This is not something I'm going to do every week because. It's not. It's anniversary every week, so it's a one-off. So I ask a question. And the yeah, people go that are going to come along, my friend, they're going to be there because they're fans of yours, and you mean something to them. You, yeah. you're, that, that's forty years worth of your catalogue. It might also be that you know we we've had you know sons and daughters of, of people who are no longer sadly with us, and they might go, yeah, this is my mum or my father's favourite record. Um, we loved it. I'm growing up. It was part of our heritage. And they may have some things that they want to say themselves, something that's happened to them, memories. You know, they may come back with, you know, T-shirts, concerts, you know. And I just think it's lovely because it, it just bonds. Music brings people together. Oh, that's wonderful, mate. It does. So this is going to be Wednesday the 17th at the uh, Troubadour in the yep. Brompton Road. Yep. That's going to be yourself, Eddie McDonald, with Billy Liberator, Paul Evans. The tickets you can get through the, du- to, uh, the, through the Troubadour. Is there a website, Michelle, or one else? Yes. Michelle? Google Troubadour and you go straight through and buy tickets on their website. Well, yeah. Google Troubadour and you go straight through and you buy tickets on their website. Now, what sort of time does that kick off, Eddie? We're going to be... Um, I've got the timings here, so come back to those in a minute. I'll get the timings handy. Will do, mate. Minute. Right now, this is the last song you got. You bought in from your uh, bundle of beauties, mate, from your store of super songs. Yeah. So can you introduce this and tell me why you've chosen this track? Well, I sort of like this band because in, they are Marmite. Some people yep. love them, yep. but some people hate them. But this band changed my life and also i'm indebted to them because we were due to play a show supporting them third on the bill at the lyceum in london and um we didn't get a sound check and stroppy here said look i want our band to be at this best we're not going to get a sound check we're not going on and this guy called the promoter who's famous in london called john curd you probably heard of him yep. yeah so is it straight music? I think it was, possibly. Uh, I, I, knew, I knew his son quite well, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go, yeah. Yeah, he was quite as a character, and um, bless his soul. And he said, look, don't be a complete... <clears throat> this is an opportunity. If you don't play this gig, you'll be an idiot. And I'm like, we're not, you know, to do my little stroppy Eddie moment here, because I, I fought hard for the alarm. I, I would never take anything from anybody. I, I faced out Miles Copeland once, the police manager used to run my record company, and I got in a car with him and said, you're not promoting us, you're not doing enough like that. We had one guy in the London called Steve Tannett who was like, he had our back and he was amazing behind us. But we had to fight for everything. So when we finally got a break, I needed people you know, behind us. But literally you two and Ian Wilson, who was our manager, who the then agent, got us the gig with you two. You two took to us, they took us under their wing. They took us to America without a record out. Literally, we were touring wow. America on the, basically the war album um, and literally took us all around the States, they introduced us to the whole of America. They took us onto radio shows. They took us everywhere. Wow. And they even gave us their tour bus. They were so kind to us, so generous. And, um, you know, you look back on people in your life who've changed it, you know, they've got on to be the monolith that is you too. But in those days, they were a rock band, they were Irish, they were great, and they were lovely people, and they gave us a chance that we could never have dreamt of. And so I was, I'm forever grateful, as human beings, never mind being a rock band, they were really kind and What a wonderful awesome story. Yeah. I love that story. Yeah, and so this is to, going out to the boys. This is New Year's Day, you too. <laughs> Now, I'm going to have to stop that there, Eddie, because we've been talking so much. It's been such a great show. We've only got uh, 45 seconds left, and I have to end my show how I usually end my show, which is like this. <laughs> we've only got 40 seconds. Now, when I do this, people look for chocolates in the studio. Do you like chocolates? I love chocolate. Do you want to, do you want to try and find one? <laughs> All I can say is I've, I've, I've gone dark chocolate. <laughs> I never thought the day would come. Have a, have, a, have, a look, have a look, look around. You might be able to find a chocolate. Yeah, looking cool. No, 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 no. <laughs> this isn't it. Oh, no. You might have a look in there. Look. It's coming out of his hat. <laughs> oh, my God. A ton of... It could be a rabbit. Oh, that's a chocolate. Listen, I'm going to have to thank Dawn Parry down there at the 365 HQ. Eddie McDonald's found the chocolate. I want to thank you that, mate. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Take care.